Hey, y'all. Yeah. It's Monday. Today is Monday. Got my Catzilla shirt on. <sighs> this cat cracks me up on this come picture. Over here. Right, yeah, yeah, get over here. What are you doing? Get in here. Way right. over there trying to like sneak off the side of the I could. I didn't know frame. where the camera was. <laughs> so we're going to do one about the uh, the Hatchet series. We saw them all. We watched them all in about a two-day period. Yeah, we watched the first five two. five of them. No, there's four of four? them. Yeah. We watched the first two on Saturday night, and then I watched yeah. the la the the second two like last night. They're they're all free on Amazon Prime. Well, no, that's not entirely true. Wasn't one of them we had the last uh, one? Victor, Cro Victor yeah. Crowley, which is the fourth one. Yeah, uh, right. That one, I think, was $3.99. Right, yeah. But the weird thing about it, though, is that the first two i think are free to watch on amazon prime if you have an amazon prime subscription now three and four i think if you want the unrated version like yeah. you have to pay to rent them okay but to be honest i watched the r-rated version and i can't imagine what they cut out of those because those are so fucking gory yeah. that it's like the unrated one can't be that much more gory because uh, the r-rated ones are yeah. pretty fucking gory there must have been some more in there Maybe, but it's just, I don't know. But that's I was just like kind of... That's for the Uber fans. Yeah, I guess so. Although yeah. I will say that, like, the kills in this are super, super fun. Yeah. Somebody, like, already brought up easily the best kill. I think probably one of the best kill in, like, any slasher movie ever is in the first movie where Victor Crowley takes that woman's head. I think you were in the bathroom, so you missed it. Yeah. But he takes, like, the woman's head and puts his hands in there like that and just basically pulls her head, like, yeah. in half. It looks so fucking great. I love it. Yeah, being from the South and having, you know, going to New Orleans a lot and having friends who are, you know, friends and relatives that are Cajuns and shit. With Cajuns, nothing more than damn fucking country Creole anyway. They're just another kind of Southern person. This this movie is pretty much spot on. Uh, shows the French Quarter. I used to hang out there all the time. I could head goth clubs there back in the days I would hang out there. Hung out there at around the same time Marilyn Manson and old fucking Trent Reznor were hanging out there. Marilyn Manson says, don't go down there. He's right. You're going to end up fucking one of three places. Prison, a hospital, or a cemetery. Fucking, uh, you get in trouble down there. And uh, everybody I knew that fucking <laughs> hung out down there fucking got in trouble in some way or another. Just a bunch of fucking drunks. And it's in the middle of the fucking hood. But it is kind of cool. There is a certain look to that area and uh the premise of this movie is basically friday the 13th all right happening in the bio and it's like a except funny except it's funny that the tone <laughs> well the tone is kind of like it uh kind of like uh evil dead in a way, what's it? What's it? Nash versus Evil Dead, or uh, Ash versus, Ash versus each Evil Dead? That's kind of the tone. Over the fucking top, gore, humor, sex, and just amusement. And it's kind of like an all-star cast of like who's who from the whole horror movie scene. And uh, it's got callbacks and shout-outs to all the fucking classics. It's just a good series. It's a good series, and they, they kept it up over four episodes. The only thing I would say that would be close, a close comparison in terms of quality would be that Phantasm series. It's a lot like that. Um, it's better than Friday the 13th. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I know that might be like a little bit... Yeah. I mean, now, some of the... Friday the 13th Part 2 is probably my absolute favorite. The first three are good of Friday the 13th. And the fifth yeah. one is good. Yeah. Um, But... I kind of feel like these ones, although I think the first one, the first Hatchet movie is still my favorite, yeah. um, all of them are worth watching. Yeah. Like the first one is the funniest, yeah. but I feel like the the kills got crazier. Yeah. I was going to say like, yeah, my favorite kill is that woman getting her head pulled in half. But my second favorite kill is actually from the fourth one, which is called Victor Crowley. And that was where the one guy's publicist Victor Crowley tears off her arm with her phone still in it, shoves it all the way up her cooch, and it comes out her mouth yeah. with the phone still going. Um, I loved that. That was very creative. So I really like, and I like he he kind of like tends to pull people in half, pull their arms off. He reaches in there for people's spines and like pulls their spine and their skull out like through the fucking. Yeah. I mean, it just gets like wackier and wackier as it goes. There's a lot of good things about it about the whole series there's not many bad things about it I'd have to say I think the shining star of the movie is the writing 
The writing's very good. Everything that's mentioned in a movie kind of comes up in later movies. So they remember things. I think that these were, even though they came out, like the first one came out in 2006. Yeah. The second one came out in 2010. The third one came out in 2013. And the fourth one came out in 2017. But I think at least the first three were yeah. written to be um, a trilogy. Okay. And you can definitely tell because one, and I think that if you just see them, you know, just uh, as standalones, the end of them might piss you off because they always end like super abruptly, right, yeah. like on a, but, but it's because this, the next one like picks up exactly right where that yeah. one left off. So, you know, so you kind of have to watch all of them. It's almost kind of like four episodes of a show more yeah. than four movies. And it's like weird that they were that far apart. Real good casts. The acting is good for this kind of movie. The tone is good. It's got um, classic fucking stars fucking show up out of nowhere, fucking, and you're like, oh, it's him. And, so oh, many oh, Easter eggs. Him. Yeah, yeah. So all many. Kinds of and I'm eggs. sure I didn't even, like, get them all. Yeah. It's weird because, okay, you so. You have I a lot of directors in the background playing shit and fucking people from the scene doing stuff. Jenny recognizes them because she, she knows all the directors. I don't. But she's, well, and actors yeah. that turned up in other horror, in other movies, horror movies, too, right. like a lot of 80s. Because yeah. you can tell, like, Adam Green, who wrote and directed these, um, you can tell that he straight up fucking loves 80s slasher movies. So these are kind of like, I don't even want to say it's like a parody. It sort of is, but it's more like Not a really. loving homage. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like really, and he seems to know, like, what everybody wants to see in these types of movies. It's full spectrum. It is. They're just wildly, wildly entertaining. Every single one of them was entertaining. I will say, like, the first one's still my favorite one, and I think the third one was probably the weakest, but they're all worth watching, and they're all, like, super fun. So There aren't any bad ones. No, they're all, they're they're totally all worth watching. And so what ended up happening with this, I had heard of the first movie, Hatchet, right? And I had just never got around to watching it. For some reason, I was, like, kept mixing it up with Machete. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, I can't imagine why. But uh, then a while back, remember when we were watching that Kane Hodder documentary that's on Shudder? I think we even reviewed it for the matinee show. And he was went uh, way into like talking about the Hatchet series because obviously he's, uh, you know, he plays Victor Crowley and he plays like a couple other parts and he was the stunt coordinator on it as well. So I was just like, man, I really need to get around to like watching that series one of these days because Kane Hodder is like a cool dude. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then I saw that they were all on Amazon Prime. So I said, well, fuck it. I'm just going to, I thought I was just going to watch the first one, but then I was like, oh, they have all the other ones too. So shit, might as well. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Todd shows up. Tony Tony Todd. Todd. Tony Todd shows up. He's in like in three of them. He's, um, He's very briefly in the first one. Uh, And then in the second one, he's like a main character. Yeah. And then the third one, he just kind of turns up on video. Cause I'm, That's the dude from Candy Band, if you don't know what yeah. talking about. The black dude from Candy Band. He's fucking great in it. Sid Haig shows up in it. He's in the third yeah, one. Yeah, shows up. Well, I'm talking about the series. Just yeah. in, he, Sid Haig shows up. Sid Haig always blows shit out of the water. That motherfucker's fucking funny. Funny, creepy motherfucker. Oh, my God. <laughs> was it for some reason one of his funniest lines? Because he was only, like, in one scene, but yeah. it's like he really fucking steals it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah, that was the... Th- third movie that was that was the third movie um he just turns up he's this guy that has like victor crowley's dad's ashes for whatever reason and so they show up at his house pretty much he's playing himself and he's just like this cranky old yeah (laughs) like fucking redneck dude yeah and it's just like so funny it's like for some reason the funniest shit that he said to me even though he said a bunch of funny shit was that he's like, what are you coming here in the middle of the night? And she's like, it's 845. That's what I said. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. the middle of the night, it's 845. Yeah. He's but basically it's, playing Captain Spaulding again, but it's just not. Pretty just, much. Just, but it's basically, he always played, he got famous for that act. And he does, yeah. he fucking chews up the fucking scenery and does what he does. What's so fucking funny is that the first time I ever saw him in a movie was in a fucking alien Rip off. What was the name of that fucking movie? Was that called Contamination or No, no, no that 80s. that was the Italian one. It was eighties and it was it was one of fucking um Cameron's first movies and it was a alien. It was a Roger Corman movie. Roger Corman movie. He was in it. He plays a character that basically doesn't speak. He has one fucking line. And he gets he had these weapons that were these crystal shards and they go to this alien planet and a piece of fucking crystal shard jumps up his arm and goes up his arm slowly 
into his heart and kills him. And fucking that scene freaked me the fuck out. And when you're a kid, you don't know who Sid Haig is. You know what I mean? I didn't make it because it was at the kind of towards the beginning of his career. And it was a trip later on when I fucking revisited that movie again and all these years that was Sid Haig playing that fucking character when he, he was young. He was actually in a movie from the 60s, the late yeah. 50s, early 60s, called Spider Baby was, the name with of the, Lon Chaney Jr. I remember the name of the fucking movie. It was called fucking Galaxy of Terror. That's right. Yeah. Contamination was the Italian alien ripoff. Yeah. And That's that one, one was Galaxy of Terror was the Roger Corman the, alien ripoff. Yeah, some of you guys might want to some of you guys might want to revisit Galaxy of Terror. It was actually a well-made fucking Roger Corman ripoff movie. It was so good that the uh, fucking Cameron got selected to to do fucking Aliens too, based on his work in that fucking movie. And and that's the only movie I saw where a big old alien caterpillar rapes a woman. Yeah. In, that's a whole, in the scene. It's a fucking trip, man. <laughs> that movie was a fucking trip. But anyway, back to this one. But yeah, so, yeah, so Tony Todd is in this, uh, yeah. briefly in the first one. Robert England is in it. Oh, thank yeah. you, Jack. Uh, what very, did he say? Very nice. Nothing. It's okay. just like a little, I can't even actually tell what that is. What is that? It looks like a marshmallow. That's maybe a little marshmallow? Okay. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's a little happy marshmallow. Yeah. But yeah, so Robert England is in this very briefly uh, in the first movie. I'm trying to think of like all the fucking people that show up. In the third one, not only is Sid Haig in that, but one of the main characters is Caroline Williams, who played Stretch in Texas Chainsaw 2. Um, you got, now in the first movie, you have a character named Mary Beth, who's kind of like a recurring character throughout. Mm -hmm. Now she's played by, uh, I can't remember the name of the actress from the first one. Uh, I want to say maybe it's uh, Tamara Feldman or something like that. Now she was replaced in subsequent movies with um, the chick that played the little girl in Halloween four and five. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so she turns up as a main character as well. She takes over uh, Mary Beth. In the second one, a main character who plays Mary Beth's uncle is fucking Tom Holland, the guy who directed the original Child's Play and the original Fright Night. Mm -hmm. And he's like a character in that movie too. People turn up in this. Oh, and in the fourth one, there's like a flashback of 1964 at the beginning. And the guy at the beginning is Jonah Ray from the new Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, that's right. I had forgotten that he was, I didn't even like know. I was like, hey, is that Jonah? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I know he's probably been in other stuff, but I didn't like realize I was going to like see him there. But it's just kind of like so many fucking people turn up yeah. in this. I can't believe I didn't know about this series. Nobody even mentioned it. Yeah, and like I said, we were only just, I had kind of heard of it around the periphery, but... yeah. Um, I had only I was only reminded of it because we watched that Kane Hodder documentary. It's got a lot of Southern humor in it, cultural references and shit. Uh, yeah, Daniel Harris, thank you. Some of the cast actually is Southern. I can tell by the accents. The, the woman that played that cop, that's a real Southern accent. Probably, I think you said Texas. Well, she's she wasn't a cop. She was a um, reporter. You, a reporter, that's what it was. Well, like she I said, that was the same chick from Texas Chainsaw Massacre okay. too. That yeah. chick that played Stretch. Yeah, so some of the people had real Southern accents. And fucking Sig Hage, Sig, Sig, Sid Haig must be Southern because his accent was spot on. Well, he always like talks like that. Yeah, but I, I heard it. He was laying it on a little bit thicker. Yeah. And I don't know where, maybe you guys know where he's from, but he sounded Southern to me. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, just a fucking good series. I didn't know about it. We just yeah. found it kind of by accident. We're scrolling through and I says, what's that? And she, Jenny went... I've heard about that series. Everybody's what telling us to watch it. So I said, put it on. That shit was fucking fire. Well, like I said, good. I'd been it wanting to see it because it good. Real good. because Kane Hodder was like yeah. talking about it, and I was kind of yeah. like, oh shit. Well, I put it up there with hey, you know, I'm gonna give credit where credits due, man. I I put it up there with um, Phantasm and uh, Evil Dead and the first, you know, three. Uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Even though Friday the Thirteenth has a very different tone, it's, di it, it, it's that that's more classic. It was supposed to be a little more serious. The tone in this one is a little bit more like Phantasm or Evil Dead. This kind one's of, more and, comedic. And comedic. And a bunch of aunt homages to other horror movies that you've seen with the all-star cast, and it's fucking violent, man. It's really violent. 
Yeah, it's um, super, super gory. Yeah, super gory. But f- but hilarious. Yeah. I, I mean, think, so over the top that it's yeah, like hilarious. Yeah, ripping people's heads up, fucking kicking people <laughs> in the back of the head with their fucking teeth and the fucking head goes sliding across <laughs> the table. And then the eyes blink. I mean, I don't know if this would have scared me when I was a kid because of the tone. Maybe it would have. I used to think fucking gore was really over the top, especially in Friday the 13th. I go back and look at those old Friday the 13th movies. There's not much in them. It was all suggestion. Yeah, not compared to this shit. This shit's right. like, this yeah. shit's super gory. <laughs> yeah, on par with Evil Dead. Yeah, there's just like fucking intestines and yeah. brains falling out of people's yeah. heads and people's heads being smashed. And... It's so over the top, it's not It's not realistic, it's wacky, but it is, you know what I mean? It's just, it's good. It's good. It's, it's, it's good entertainment. That's what I mean. It's kind of like, it's super gory and super yeah. violent, but it's one of those things where, like you said, it's so over the top that it like just becomes ridiculous and yeah. funny. It's got a really good villain, the bad guy. He's like Jason on steroids and with a deformed head kind of like from the dude from Funhouse but the but he's a he's a Cajun he fucking got a big old mane of hair wearing his fucking coveralls and shit they got a bunch of southern characters that, that are funny you know fucking Cajun fucking swamp rat fucking on there with his fucking P-Ro fucking drinking his own piss trying to he drinks his own piss for some reason. That was like, well, just because. Just well, because. I just thought it was funny because they were like making a joke, but I was like, oh, don't listen to that guy because he was like yeah. supposed to be like the guy at the beginning of like yeah, what's that guy like piss. Crazy Ralph or whatever yeah, at the beginning of the Friday the Thirteenth yeah. uh, movies where they're like, don't go in the swamp. It's like yeah. blah blah blah. So he was that guy, but they didn't listen to him. It's like, oh, don't listen to him. He's he's uh, what they call him, Jack Cracker or whatever. Yeah. It's like, he drinks his own piss, and it's like that they show. Turns him later. out later he, he does drink he his own. He's out in the fucking people fucking just drinking his piss. Out in the bike. And I then, mean, it's then just. Then they're out there with fucking shotguns trying to fucking hunt alligator and. Just funny shit, man. Funny shit. Fucking. Todd plays a character who's like a tour guide down the French Quarter with that spot on. There's, there's guys like that. And he's fucking walking around like a fucking Haitian bokur and shit with a fucking. <laughs> staff with a skull on it and this fucking top hat it's just good characters man and yeah fucking white diamond fucking makeup on his eye with one little rhyme kind of like a bond villain yeah with his golds in his mouth and shit fucking, fucking cool yeah he's only he's only in one scene in yeah. the first movie but he's like a main character in, in the, the second, second movie yeah another thing that cracks me up about this is that the kid the guy that appears in the first one who's like the um what his character's name is sean he's like the guy like the asian guy that's uh dr- driving the swamp boat because yeah. i don't know like the whole plot is that there's all these guys and they're in uh new orleans for mardi yeah. gras and one of them wants to go do this ghost swamp tour and so he ends up with this really shady like uh you know tour guide like yeah. you know the boat gets uh you know fucked up on the bottom and they like get stranded out in the woods and then victor crowley starts picking them off so it's like this guy sean that's um running this like fucking shifty ass yeah. tour boat and it's like at first he's putting on this really really overdone like you know creole sort of accent which is yeah. obviously fake and then even though he's like you know an asian looking dude and then like later on when they start like after all the shit starts going down like then he starts like talking and then he talks like in a sort of stereotypical Asian like over the top yeah. Asian like kung fu movie kind of voice and then like after a while after they it just like shit starts going really really pear shaped then he mm. just has like a regular ass like voice yeah. like I'm from Detroit I'm just yeah. like fucking but it's just like this whole fun and the funny thing about that is that that guy turns up in every even though like he dies spoiler alert like everybody pretty much everybody dies in this movie so it's like you know what i mean that's not really a spoiler it's a slasher it's just part of the day pretty much everybody gets killed you have to get killed if you're in this movie but um oh i forgot that to mention that in the second or third one zach galligan from uh gremlins turns up in that one too i think that's the third one also Oh, oh and also in the third one the main guy that's the head of the SWAT team is the guy that played Jason in the remake, I think, of Friday right. the thirteenth. So there we go. All right, so now, I what oh I was Lu- gonna oh. Louis comes in, uh he, he comes through uh once again with his information. He said that the late Sig Sid Haig, God rest his soul, was from Fresno. Yeah. And my hat's off to him because he did pull off a fucking good southern accent and that I, I, I bought it. Maybe he did time in the South or something, I don't know. But uh, sounded like a southern dude just fucking going off the goddamn rails. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, he had to do it. Yeah. yeah. Right. But yeah, so so that character who played Sean in the first movie, you know, like I said, the, everybody gets killed, but then he turns up in every subsequent movie except as a different character. Um, and I really like the way they... Like the second one, it's like he turns up and it's his brother. And then the third one, he turns up like in a completely unrelated role. And it's like, I kind of like the way they sort of, uh, they sort of make a joke out of that. Oh, I forgot too, in either the second or third one, Stephen Jeffries, who played Evil Ed from Fright Night is, uh, and he was in uh, 976 Evil also. Uh, he turns up as a paramedic in that one as well and gets uh, killed by... I think Victor Crowley puts those, what are those like paddle things where mm -hmm. they like do, you know to bring people back their heart, you know, yeah. uh, and that smashes his head yeah. with those. So he gets like his head smashed with that. So like I said, pretty yeah, much later. Yeah, there you go. I couldn't yeah. remember what it was called, but yeah. So I'm trying, I'm like trying to go back and like, remember like every single person. And it's not just like every single person that turns up in this. It's also like a bunch of the references that they made. Like, I think even like two of the characters were talking and like one of them referenced, um, that movie, uh, do, 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 with the, with the rise of Les Leslie Vernon or whatever. And they like that, like Leslie Vernon was a real person, just like that found footage movie was. And, uh, so they did that and it's just kind of like, like I said, you can tell, oh, and another thing too, is that sometimes you remember in the first or second movie where I think it was the second movie where one of the rednecks that was going out there to look for Victor Crowley was, this dude and his name was Chad and some one of the other characters makes a joke about how Chad's like a douchebag name and then he says oh well at least I'm not named Skip like my brother's name Skip mm -hmm. and then the same actor turns up in the fourth movie as Skip <laughs> and I was like oh my god it's like fucking so it's like sometimes they set up jokes like just throw away lines or throw away jokes like in the first movie or the second movie and then like it pays off like way later on they'll have like a punchline and it's just like I just thought that was so so funny because the the fourth one which is just called victor crowley that actually takes place 10 years after the events of the other one you know yeah. what i mean with like the one survivor and they're like you know now they're on they wrote a book about their experience and all this other stuff because the whole premise of the movie is that victor crowley at the beginning is just like an urban legend so nobody thinks he's real because he's dead right yeah um you know, he, he's played by Kane Hodder, but his Kane Hodder also plays his dad in the flashbacks. So it's kind of, it's a similar thing to Jason where he's kind of a little bit a sympathetic protagonist because he was born and he's all deformed and then he gets killed like in a really tragic accident. And, but he, now he comes back as sort of like, he's not exactly a ghost because he's physical, but he's like, so you can like hurt him, like you can shoot him and he'll fall down and stuff like that. But then like every night he's like regenerates. So it's kind of like making fun of the whole Jason thing where you yeah. can't like kill him, but it's not exactly a ghost. He's still like physically. Yeah, he comes back anyway. But he comes back anyway. So yeah. it's almost, they kind of explain it a little bit later. Like it's this, some kind of curse where he just keeps coming back and all this other kind of shit. But yeah, so I don't know, like all of them are good. Like I said, the first one is the the best one i think the first one's funniest because i liked all the characters i liked like the two porn girls yeah uh you know, they're what are they doing bayou beavers or whatever yeah, yeah. like that guy's filming them that comes up across several films actually, yeah bayou and then they're like sniping at each other the whole yeah. time it's like that one girl telling the other your nipples are dumb yeah yeah <laughs> two porn girls that have to do these scenes together they fucking hate each other yeah <laughs> So there's lots of tits. There's yeah. a, in the first one, there's lots of tits yeah. because it's set at Mardi Gras. So you see like all the people like flashing their boobs and stuff. And then you have those two girls yeah. in the first movie too. So they just subsequently like be, are showing their tits all the time. Yeah. I feel like there's less tits in the later movies, but yeah. there's a lot or really lot of tits in the first movie. Yeah. It's almost kind of, kind of like they told them to knock it off or something. I was like, <laughs> no, well, it was set in the, it was set in the French quarter and the French quarter Especially Bourbon Street is kind of notorious for that. Although, that's mostly legend. If you're kind of a regular down there, the cops will fucking arrest you for that. They they don't let people get away with it that much. I mean, it's, uh, maybe Mardi Gras. But, you know what I mean? The cops are sick of fucking telling these tourists to put their fucking shirts back on. <laughs> and they'll, they'll make moves like they're going to send you to jail. Then they usually don't. They just haul the girl away and then let her go. They just want the other people to think that maybe she got arrested for doing that. Yeah. 
Cause well, I mean, they can't they fit to... everybody in the jail. Yeah, in fucking... Just for boob. They're just boobs. Orleans, Orleans Parish Prison fucking central fucking lockup is fucking rough. They're not going to send the fucking tourist girls down there. And like I said, it's yeah. just they're just boobs. It's not yeah. hurting anything. They're just trying to keep it to a minimum most of the time. I guess. But people come from hundreds of miles around to go to the French Quarter and get in fucking trouble. And a lot of them don't well, know how yeah. to act. They don't know how to act at all. And they kind of show that, in the, at yeah. least in the first movie, where everyone's just like puking in the street yeah. in the middle yeah. of the day because they've been like drinking for several days straight. And it's not <laughs> a safe area. Around no. that French no. Quarter is nothing but just one huge fucking ultraviolet ghetto. All right. And the cops are trying to keep fucking robbers out of there, basically. Robbers and killers. And people still get killed in there. Bad place. Yeah. Yeah. Had some good, had a, two good goth clubs for a while there, though. Fucking the, the convent and the crystal. They probably don't exist anymore. Yeah, I'd it be mo- curious. They moved yeah. out to another place. Yeah. Uh, outside of there. Yeah. Fucking. It, it's a rough area. Gramther's Hammer says, speaking of ghosts, I think I have one. BBs, like yeah. from a BB gun, keep dropping from the ceiling in my man cave. All of a sudden, I'll hear one hit the floor, then see it rolling. Thing not, is, there's no vent or hole in the ceiling. I think it's a buddy of mine who died six years ago fucking with me. You don't have a fan up there, do you? It's not a ball bearing from your fucking ceiling fan, is it? Oh, God, I hope not. Well, not if they keep falling down, because there's not that many ball bearings in there, is there? Yeah, there could be fucking a dozen of them. Hmm. I don't know. It would the fan blades would be wobbling, and I don't know what kind of fan would have bearings like that. Roller bearings. I think does, it's mostly pa- plain bearings. It that could does be seem bearings. like pretty weird. I yeah. have to say too, like last night we had just like started like to go to bed, and then all of a sudden I guess it was like some kind of weird power surge, yeah. and all the lights came on. Yeah, it was weird. Like suddenly. My dad had a weird thing like that happen. This was uh, going back maybe fifteen years in that house in Heidelberg. He was sitting there watching television. When he got up, he heard something hit the floor right in front of him. He looked at it. It was a little um, uh, little Catholic icon, like a St. Christopher medal. There was little icons like Ooh. that. And there's no Catholics in that house, as far as he knows. He didn't know where that thing came from. That's and pretty it, creepy. And there was no place for it to fall from. He yeah. just heard it hit the floor. Graham yeah. Hammer said the same thing. No fan, nothing but tiles. Yeah, weird. My dad saw something like that happen. But he, he never got down to the bottom of it. Have no idea where a little Catholic icon came from. That seems like pretty common in poltergeist kind of shit. Like, with just yeah. random shit falling out of nowhere. Yeah. Like rocks and whatnot. And that particular living room he was talking about was always very creepy. It had that poltergeist being watched feeling. But nothing ever really happened. Other than that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that deal was. That is pretty weird. And what was funny is that nobody died in that house. Although maybe it, somebody... It's not even old. Yeah, but maybe um, somebody died like uh, and was buried in... there a long time ago. <laughs> like, under, oh, like, man. Who well, knows? like I said, it's kind of like... <laughs> <clears throat> Missy, Mississippi's been planted and raised and fucking That's what buried I mean. over several times. So I kind of know? feel like even people said, oh, nobody died in the house. I'm like, yeah, but there's probably like yeah. dead people all over the fucking place. Yeah. Catholics, but <laughs> Dead Catholics but it was it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't some kind of an ancient icon either. It was pewter, from what he said. He, he showed it to me later when I went and visited. He says that I don't know where that came from. He showed it to me. It was just a little oval. I think it was a Saint Christopher. It might have been another one, but I think it was a Saint Christopher, and it had a little eye on the top of it where you could hang it, and it was a little bitty thing about that big an oval. It was either. A, I think it was the St. Christopher. And we didn't figure out where it came from. He says, I found it right there. To my dad's voice, I found it right there. I don't know where it came from. I got up. I was walking into the walking to the kitchen and heard it like that. And I looked and there it is. And I was like, oh, shit. Where's it there wasn't no place for it to fall from. Is that yours? No, it's not. Where'd that come from? I said, I don't know. Damn. <laughs> Ain't no Catholics in this house. I don't know where that came from. You know? I, like, I can get in my dad's groove. Doing yeah, that. I can. I'd imagine. call him ass on the phone and fucking put him on the show. <laughs> and have him tell a story about them putting a turkey nest in his heart. <laughs> I'd been abducted. <laughs> my dad is the white friend, Fred G. Santham. <laughs> he is kind of. Yeah. An empire! <laughs> empire jump! No. 
He doesn't. He doesn't live in a junkyard though. But he has, he's that same fucking kind of dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's the white Fred G. Sanford. I just that just dawned on me. Yeah, Dummy. <laughs> I tell you what, that used to make me laugh every single time because my grandma used to love Sanford and Son, mm. which I don't know if you knew this, but this that's actually like an American version of a British show called Steptoe and Son. Okay. Uh, which was the same kind of, I mean, they were white dudes, but it was the same dynamic. They lived in a junkyard and they were always like, you know, cranky and like yelling at each other and stuff. But yeah, um, yeah Fred Sanford calling his son yeah. dummy. Dummy. Yeah. That is still like, that's, it still makes me laugh nowadays. Yeah. It's like if I hear somebody. Grandma's asked me, can, can <laughs> ghosts move objects? Uh, yes, some can. Poltergeists can move objects, but that's RSPK, re recurrent spontaneous psychokinesis. Most ghosts are just apparitions. It's, it's a vision. It's something that you just see. It doesn't interact with you. It's like a pre-programmed recording from the past. But then there's another phenomenon called uh, called haunting, which is a mixture of ghost and poltergeist. It's a it's something that can sometimes be seen, like a holographic image, or it looks real sometimes. It can make a physical a physical manifestations. It might open a door, or or it might something. It may cause something to fall. Um, objects might move in that area, like a poltergeist phenomenon. You usually don't see a situation where you see in a ghost and you see the ghost pick something up and move it. That's not what it's like. You might see a ghost or an image or, or, or an apparition and then a day later find a vase maybe placed in the center of the floor of a room and you just walked out of that room, there was nothing, no obstruction and you come back in the room and there it is. So it moved it, but you didn't see it move. Shit like that. Yeah, that's pretty creepy. But things falling, f falling, uh, in in at Mammoth during the Poltergeist, we'd see things, you know, things would fall or fly like it was thrown or shot. And it didn't move right. It could stop midair and drop before it hit a glass window pane or something. Well, and it's yeah. kind of a thing where you don't really see it start to move either. You yeah, just kind you of see, see it, it when it moves in into motion. your field of view. You didn't see where it came from. You just saw where it arrived. Because that's what kind of happened when I saw that fucking remote control. Yeah. Like, I didn't see it come off the table. I just, like, saw it was moving, like, right under my vision. And then I was like, what the fuck? Already in motion when you see it, usually. Yeah. Because at first I thought that I kicked the table. but It comes from a direction where it's an impossible, like, say, behind you. But behind you is just a, a you know, a corner of a room. Nobody's back there. So how, how did and it flew? You talk about it too much, it's going to start happening yeah, yeah. again. Well, it's like, I think last, last night it was some weird shit. I think it, that it was... It also turned the TV on out here. Not only did it turn the, the those lights on and the TV here, it turned the TV in the living room on too. Oh, did it? Okay. Yeah, so it I wasn't just realize. that room. Well, it didn't... It felt like a power surge. But the weird it, thing was it wasn't all the lights. No, it just was, some. It was the, um, the direct TV thing. Yeah. It was the, the front two... TV. The front TV. And the two little... And the two little, like, we have those, like, little laser, like, colored laser lights. Well, they're little lighting effects. That yeah. Shine up but it didn't the turn the lamps on. It didn't no. turn, like, the bathroom light on or anything like just that. Just some things. It just turned those two on and the direct TV thing, but not our TV, but it turned on the TV in the we living room. heard something ramp up, like, whoop. I don't know if it was the fan. Yeah, see, I that's what I thought, because I had a thing over my face, like, to keep the light out, and then I heard... Either something went like that or something got quiet because I was like, did the air conditioning go off? Because I was like, I thought the air conditioning no, broke or something. No, I checked the AC it was going. And then I went like that. And I'm like, why are the fucking lights on? We just turned those off. Yeah. There was like, they came on simultaneously. Yeah, they were like, boom. Yeah. And they came on and they're like, they're not bright, but they're like, like mine goes they're like, like from, lamps. Lots yeah, of like these. they go kind of like watery effect and it goes like from yeah, red to green to blue. Yeah, they shimmer like water and they change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't turn like the bedside lamps on or mm -hmm. anything like that. It was like, it was super, super weird. I said, Jenny, look. And I was and like. She was looking around. What happened? And I says, they turned off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh, that was weird, though, because earlier on that day, or was it the day before, that same lighting effect, I put it on the windowsill, and for some reason I looked at it, and it fell. I looked at it, and then it fell. Remember? Yeah, that was, I think that was earlier. Was that earlier that same day? 
Because I think you'd put it up on the window. Yeah. Or maybe it was the day before. It was before. up there for about 15, 20 minutes. And then you suddenly looked over there. I and looked went, at it and, and, and then it fell. Like it called my attention over there and I looked at it and it fell. It just didn't fall far. It just fell over on its side. Yeah, it didn't fall off or anything. Mm-hmm. It just kind of like, it just made a weird noise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, buttons and gadgets, DR1 or Dr. 1. Uh, this is gory, but it's very obviously fake gore. It's not like the Saw series. Those are right. just horribly gross. Yeah, this is, it's more like... More like Evil Dead. Yeah. So it's like the, the kills in it are like just hilarious. Like yeah, yeah. you see them just because they're just fucking crazy. They're with, trying to go over the top. It's yeah. Like I said, he can. just like reaches and like pulling people's spines out and there's like yeah. and the little brain will flop and stuff yeah. like that. It's like super bloody and super like intestines everywhere, but it's like, it's so over the top that it's like funny. And he's just like tearing people's arms off and crushing people's heads and stuff like that cutting people in half with this big fucking this big fucking long chainsaw and shit like that i will say you know what my one of my favorite things about the fourth movie was that uh that one character what the hell was her character name that the little uh brunette girl that came yeah. with the movie makers yeah yeah i liked her i liked her a lot she was because her she had like a little bitty I seen her before and I can't I couldn't place her. Yeah. But um I liked her like little bitty voice and she was like real sarcastic like oh uh, this she just like had some really yeah. funny lines. I think she had the funniest lines in the whole fucking movie. Yeah. Graham's thinking that when he died when I, he, he Graham's saying I thought when you died you just vanished. But he's thinking he's starting to reconsider. No, I had the near death experience and uh before that I had a spontaneous out of body experience in the army just laying in bed and got so relaxed that my head started to feel like it was shaking and it started to rattle the microwave that was near near me and my roommate got up and goes what is that and he went over there and walked towards it to look at it and then all of a sudden i was looking down on the room could see through everything i could bi locate time got really stretched out like there was a bunch of extra time i could be in two places at once like i was looking at a wall locker from one angle and then looking at it from the other the opposite angle at the same time and i was like whoa whoa and, it's, and it went away solid matter just looked like vibrant colored cigarette smoke you could see little particles going through it if you looked at something you would just move towards it it was kind of hard to keep yourself still anything anytime you looked at something you moved to it and if you looked at it too long you just zoomed in and got deeper and deeper you could go into it get smaller as you went it's fucking weird and only just in a few and then he started shaking me and uh i just fucking imploded and then exploded it back into my body it was paralyzed couldn't move and then he let go of me like that and i drifted back off to sleep it didn't i couldn't fully wake up it was like sleep paralysis and then during that motorcycle wreck i was riding and before i even got to the wreck i was looking at what I thought was a shadow of myself on the ground riding a motorcycle. And I started to think about what it, what my life was like. And then it zoomed back and I was looking at myself, looking at my shadow. And I goes, where's that light from? And turned around and there's a big old white light came down and got me. And I was just in another realm. It was like damn welding arcs everywhere. It was like a world of 3D energy, like a welding arc. Faces coming at me and people that I knew and life review type deal and then i was shown that no you got to go back because this shit's too early and you had, you had to do this and that and this remember and go, oh yeah yeah i forgot to so go back and turned around and looked and just saw the universe as a big disc with interwoven colors of timelines and lifelines and weird shit and i was going oh yeah i go right there and i went back into it and was in the hospital it's weird but no, you, you, you survive, but you don't survive as a human. You're just like a point of view. You, you have memories, but not a lot of them. Um, you have memories of who you were, but that's not really who, that, that, that's not who you were. Kind of like you have memories of what you did in a video game, but you weren't that video game character. That would be a good ana- analogy of what it's like. You, re- you remember... Like, I would remember Tom Ross, but I wasn't Tom Ross. That was just a role I was playing. And yeah, then there's, like, true. other versions of you talking to you and shit, which is weird. Like, a super version of you. Kind of like a... Some people have called that the daemon. And, um... Weird shit. But you're outside space-time. So, space-time and the universe and the material world are a singularity that you're looking at from outside. <clears throat> Is, is, is wild 
not, and there was like a realm that you would consider to be like heaven, I guess. If you went into it, you might vanish. You, you probably wouldn't come back out of it, I don't think. But it's hard to say. You just have feelings. Any, any, anything you add, anything you want to know, you kind of get a, you kind of get an infusion of that information, kind of like a cat universal, kind of like I guess you call it like the Akashic Records or something, you know. It's like a universal consciousness, like an internet, a, an internet of the soul, and and all of it together is kind of like a god, but it it's not a person. It's it's the force, basically. That's <laughs> what it is. From, it's what they're talking about in Star Wars, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Camp Guy brought up Evil Dead, and I think Beowulf 18 also brought up uh, Dead Alive, which... You've never seen Dead Alive, have no, you? No, I don't think so. Which it's an that? early Peter Jackson movie. That movie is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> It's so awesome, though. It's But it's kind of the same tone as this one, where it's like just so... The gore is just so ridiculous and over the top that it's hilarious. So, I don't know. I definitely think we need to do that one. But yeah, this is, like I said, these are all on Amazon Prime. Uh, the R-rated versions, uh, I think uh, all of them are free, except maybe Victor Crowley, which is the fourth one. I think you have to pay three ninety nine for that one. Um, and I think you have to pay if you want the unrated versions of the third one, maybe. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, but these are totally all worth watching. The first one's the best, I think. The first one's the funniest. I thought they were all good, though. But they're all they're worth all watching. Yeah. And I don't know, like, because it, it seemed like some people, I was watching, like, some of the, like, Blood, Bath, and Beyond and some other people, and uh, a lot of people like the second one the best, which I can see that because Tony Todd is the main character in it. There's, you know, one of the main characters. And also Tom Holland is in it, and that's, like, kind of cool. But... I don't know. I kind of feel like the, my favorite one's the first one. And then I think the third one was maybe the weakest just because there was a little bit, um, it seemed like there was a little bit of padding in there. Like there was a couple scenes that seemed a little repetitive, but uh, like, you know, we already know this information. We don't have to have another scene like explaining that information again. But other than that, it's just like, they're all totally worth watching. I thought they were super fun. And it's yep. just really, I don't know. It's just like fun to like, Sit, have this is beer and pizza type of movies you just like sit and fucking watch all four of them like all in a row i would actually recommend watching all of them like in close proximity because they pretty much like one follows from the other other than the fourth one which is set 10 years later the first three are meant to be watched back to back yeah it's like binge watching yeah series. even though they came out like several years apart yeah. they're still like because seriously it, it ends like uh, that's the end and then there's the credits and then the next one starts pretty much exactly where that one finished off. And like I said, if you watch it, if you watch all of them together, then you'll pick up like all the through lines and like, you know, all the jokes that they set up in the first one that they kind of pay off in the later ones. So I feel like you, it's probably better to like watch them all at once. This must've been really weird to like see them. Cause you know, I think there was four years between the first one and the second one. So that must've been like really odd. <laughs> like to see them like that i don't know but uh yeah they definitely they definitely all seem like they were made around the same time you know because yeah. i guess they were written written that way um yeah camp guy said wasn't third evil dead called army of darkness yes it was kind of a different location and plot yeah he went back to like the middle ages in that one because he went back in time and uh yeah with the skeleton soldiers and all that and but not skeleton soldiers they were just kind of like you know he was fighting skeletons and whatnot all right so um are we are we done i said what i had to say about it okay well yeah, yeah so check out hatchet if you're into like 80s slasher movies uh because these are all super fun so we will be back tomorrow probably talking about a Stuart gordon movie but i'm not gonna tell you which one it is although some of you might guess but uh, yeah, so we'll be back again tomorrow at around 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So we will see you guys again then. Bye. <laughs>